Five minutes. It's a pleasure to be talking on this bill. And uh, this is a bill that's got a feel-good factor to it, Madam Speaker. It's a populist bill, in my view. And uh, a number of my colleagues have already highlighted some of the philosophical differences we have with this bill. Um, and particularly, um, contrary to many of the misguided participants in this House, and who have said it on a number of occasions, the Lynn's records show that only 3% of sales are to foreigners. The other aspect is the national government has already implemented a whole raft of changes. We've heard about some of those around the foreign borrowers having to get an IRD number if they're going to buy a house. The introduction of a two-year bright line test, which is an increasingly uh, stringent requirement on foreign borrowers. The introduction of a, of a tax on uh, whether, when they buy um, a, a property and sell it. They are required to pay resident withholding tax, Madam Speaker. And of course, we've implemented a number of the uh, Sherwin uh, recommendations around foreign trusts. What I want to focus on is some of the mechanisms proposed in this bill, because I think they highlight some of the difficulty in terms of the practicality around how this bill is actually going to work. Just to uh, go back a second, the uh, current OIO uh, rules relating to sensitive land have a two-stage uh, test to it. First one is, is the investor test, and a person must demonstrate, and I'm talking about a person, being a foreigner, uh, business, appropriate business experience and acumen, financial commitment, good character, and comply with certain Immigration Act requirements. The second test is benefit to New Zealand test, which is a general test around creation of jobs, increasing investment, uh, environmental and other factors. And of course it applies to uh, non-rural land greater than uh, five hectares, and in regard to land with anything regarding water or historical or Māori influence, uh, 0.4 hectares. So what this uh, means, and under the current OIO rules, the process is that for any foreign buyer, they must get prior approval and they must have regard to, if they look at a piece of land, uh, what are the historical significance of that land? If it's got anything to do with water, will inevitably require a report on it, will require a Waitapu report if there's any consideration of that issue. Often these reports cost um, a lot of money. Um, it's not unknown for many of these applications to be 100,000, involve a lot of lawyer times, uh, accounting, accountants times, etc. Very expensive, and the process for approval takes a heck of a long time. And so, my issue with this is, first of all, the need for these people to get prior approval, and so how they're going to enter auctions. The second one is the cost to the foreigners for going through that process. The third one is the cost to OIO, and we've seen the reports of the Treasury around what that's going to incur, which will be significant. And the third thing is waiting for the minister in her determination to eventually come round and actually make a determination. I think this whole thing is going to get bogged down through the lack of practicality of working through the many um, uh, applications that will come through in the process relating to that. The second issue I've got is around the definition of lifestyle block. And Madam Speaker, the test is that a uh, lifestyle block is whether it's uh, predominantly used for residential use. In my area where I live, uh, South Auckland, I'm surrounded by lifestyle blocks. And the issue is, uh, are they economic units? greater than or less than five hectares. And of course, many can argue that growing flowers or some horticultural or even having racehorses, that makes them very, very uh, economic. And so I think, Madam Speaker, there, that is an uh, area of confusion, and of course that creates an area for loophole for uh, foreign buyers. So even if you wanted to stop them, I think that's a possible area of confusion. The third area is around the responsibility on conveyances to certify to the best of their knowledge that the purchaser complies with the new rules. And so we, I think in the select committee, uh, we will be inundated with real estate agents, lawyers, etc., coming to see us absolutely against the issue of them being required to go through this process to attest that every transaction has met that test. And of course, there's uh, increased financial liabilities in this bill. 
And so, Madam Speaker, I have a lot of difficulty with this. I think it's going to be a difficult bill to implement, and I don't think it achieves anything other than making sure that the coalition government has a feel-good factor around it. I apologise. Yeah, this time has expired. Um, uh, I, ca I call Jamie Strange. I understand this is a split call, five minutes. Uh, is it is a split call or is it ten minutes? Yep, so cool. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, I am.